Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 53 of my Iron Man Hulkbuster build. Obviously quite a lot of work has gone on this project over the last two years and the previous 52 parts, which you should watch in full if you haven't seen them. And now we're getting to a point where it's nearly finished. So last time I did the main pieces of armor that were left on the back of the legs. We've still got some fill-in sections to go, but part of that is dependent on the control system, the electronics and lighting. So this time I'm going to start off doing some electronic systems. I'm going to basically lay out an entire system for this suit, which is going to be a kind of multi-node approach, which I'll talk more about in a moment. And then that system is going to get distributed throughout the suit into each aspect, like this, as we go, so that I can finish it off and detail it up. I'm probably going to start at the top and work my way down, and then after that the whole project will be finished. But don't forget I do have other projects in my channel, including my BB-8 builds, my life-size Ultron robot, which was out last week, and also various other robotic sci-fi projects coming up. But let's see what we're going to do with this control system. Around the back of the suit we can see some of the existing electronics, which are extremely hacked together. There's two Arduinos in there and a bunch of other stuff, but that's not all of it. Each arm also has some stuff in. There's an Arduino, some power regulator stuff, and also a joystick down at the bottom there, which is used, was used at least, or the intention was to control the whole suit with those joystick buttons. I have various mechanics that are electronically controlled, like the helmet lifting mechanism here, which lifts up the front of the faceplate and the top of the helmet. And I've also got these pieces, which are the pop-up guns, uh, which fire in each shoulder. So those are a combination of servos and lights and various things that need to be controlled. The unibeam is another thing that fires and has several modes, and as I mentioned, these flaps also open. Those are going to have some more details in, but they've also got lighting behind these red panels inside. So I've got various types of features with uh, various things that need to be controlled. Here's a collection of some of the things that either exist in the suit or will exist in the suit. Obviously we've got quite a lot of Arduinos. This is a Mega, which is probably going to be the main brain in the end. I've also got some Unos dotted around, I've got some Nanos here and some Pro Minis. Um, there's lots of lighting in the suit, Neo Pixels, which are individually addressable RGB LEDs. There's also some that just come on, which are normal LEDs. And I've got some 10 watt LEDs here, which are really bright. Um, and those are going to be a future plan for the suit. These will need special drivers, so I've got an L298 here, which can handle slightly more current. There's also some bigger ones that will probably be needed if I have lots of these that come on at once. So something like the motor drivers I've been using in BB-8 to drive them. I do of course have motors as well, like the helmet lifting motor is one of these. And there's probably going to be some more of those in there to lift the shoulder flaps eventually. So again I'll need the motor driver to drive that. And an Arduino to deal with the feedback pot for the positioning of that. I'd like to have a little display in there like I did in my old Iron Man helmet that tells me what's going on. So I've got one of these. This is actually a shield that plugs on top of an Arduino. It's a bit big though, so I've also found these really tiny 1.1 inch displays, which I'm going to have a go with today. And those are tiny and I could get a couple of those maybe in front of my eyes or just inside the helmet so I can read them and see what's going on with the control system. Um, Bluetooth link is this one here. This is similar to what I used in my BB-8 project. So I can pair that with a smartphone. I've already got an Internet of Things device fitted in there, which um, allowed me to do smartphone before. Look back for that episode. But in fact, that meant connecting to the internet. So I think I'm going to do something much more simple now and just have a terminal app on my smartphone. I can send characters down to trigger the features remotely when I'm not in the suit. And obviously, I'll still have those buttons and joysticks for triggering the features when I am in the suit. I've decided the best thing to do to make this as expandable as possible as I go and detail up the suit is to build a sort of multi-node approach. So we're going to have an Arduino Mega, which is the main brain in the middle, and that's going to talk to all of the other nodes over a serial bus and also allow various inputs. So the thing with the Arduino Mega is it's got four UART serials, which means it's got four hardware serial interfaces that are really reliable. You can use software serial on other Arduinos, but it tends to be a lot slower and more processing overhead. So uh, this one I've got essentially these four serial interfaces I can talk to. One of those is going to go off to the, basically it's actually the USB port, which goes off to be for the programming and goes off to a PC. Eventually I will stick a Bluetooth adapter onto that so that I can control it over Bluetooth essentially. But that won't happen until most of the functionality is there and at that point I'll sacrifice being able to program it. So the other three are going to go off to various other things. 
So two of them will at least go off to other inputs from hand controllers and the nodes in the arms. And the other one will go off to a sort of multi-drop kind of thing. And on, on that will be other things and each one will be intelligent. So it will have its own Arduino, either an Uno, a Pro Mini, or probably a Nano, various places dotted around the suit. Those in turn will control the other devices. So if we take one of the motors, for instance, and a motor driver, then that could be, for instance, linked over here. So that could be the helmet control system. And then we can again have a motor driver and perhaps some lighting on this Pro Mini over here, controlling some lights. And then we can have either servos or something else or NeoPixels on one of the others. And essentially this will decide what to do with the inputs from these various sources and send data out over serial. Each one will listen for an identifier and then do the thing if it's the right time. And the Mega is going to have this little display attached. So essentially I can build a menu control system up by clicking buttons on the inputs or sending data. And when I'm in the suit, I can see what it is and then I can trigger each thing to happen. I thought I'd get this little display working first. And this is a 128 by 64 dot display, I assume, which is um, 0.96 inches from corner to corner. But it's an OLED display, so rather than LCD. And it's got extremely good contrast, and um, it's pretty easy to make it work. So this is an I squared C device that's connected to the SCL and SDA pins, and it's connected to power, and that's all you need. So we'll have a look, quick look at the code for how that works, and then I'll get on and build up a menu system. Here's some Arduino code for that. I found various example code online, so I didn't write all of this, but um, there's quite a lot of examples out there. And this is using u8glib.h, which is a really good library for LCD displays, and there's several supported in there. And apparently this is the correct one for this, 128 by 64. So um, there's a function here called draw. At the moment it's set for drawing strings, and I've got obviously hello world from X robots written on there. These numbers to the left are the coordinates, so they all start down the left-hand column and they're placed at different lines. So out of 128 by 64, you can have those coordinates. So I'm starting on effectively dot 10 or line 10, 30 and 50, which puts those bits of text down the screen. So um, in setup, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Some of it's commented out uh, for rotating 180 degrees, which could be quite useful for flipping it upside down. We've also got, if you want to use SPI, I'm using um, I squared C. Now I think this display is monochrome, so some of this stuff doesn't work, so this is set to white, and there's RGB settings, but I can't actually um, change those, I don't get anything different, and that's probably because it's a monochrome display. So various other settings, and then in the main loop, it basically just says, sort of like, a, it seems to be this function mainly, to draw, um, and go from the first page to the next page, and I'm not sure if we can store different sets of characters and scroll through them or how that works, but all I really need to know is that when I do draw, it runs this function and displays the text. Um, and there's a delay that rebuilds the picture, and I'm not sure what happens if we just hit it once and leave it. I uh, don't really know much about OLED displays, whether it decays away or what happens, uh, but for now I can run a program loop, and when I select different options, I can have it display different text. Here's the reference documentation for U8 Glib on GitHub. Uh, there's quite a lot to this actually, so you can do all sorts of things like drawing graphics, individual pixel squares, you can draw a bitmap, um, obviously drawing characters, ellipses, frames, all sorts of stuff, and there's lots of documentation on this. So what I found in fact is this first page, next page part of the code, in fact clears the whole display, and whatever you put in there then gets drawn, so I've simplified that, I've actually taken that draw function away, because that's going to suit my menu system better, and um, I've done two things here, separated by 500 millisecond displays. So one of them does the draw string and says option one on the screen, and the next one says option two on the screen, and that should alternate between them every half a second. And there it is, so hopefully you can see it alternating between option one and option two, and this is going to be the basis for a menu system driven by the hand controllers and from Bluetooth. So let's see if I can code up some input modules. We'll see if we can scroll through some menus. I've now built a really simple menu system, so I've got my PC attached to a serial port on the Arduino over USB. So uh, now whenever I type into that serial terminal an A and press enter, it scrolls through the menu options, two, three, and back to the beginning. And eventually that will be on the end of a smartphone, so I'll type into a Bluetooth terminal on my phone and that will be attached to the UART serial, 
and I'll be able to scroll through the options. So as well as being able to see them on this display here, I'll be able to see them on the phone screen. So you can hopefully see that being echoed back to the screen every time I type an A in, it scrolls through option one, two, three. To do that, I've opened a serial port here. So i am uh, got a serial begin statement and then I'm looking at serial data to say if there's any serial data, then input, which is a character variable, um, to serial read. And so put that serial data into the variable. If it's an A, then I'm incrementing a counter variable by one each time, and that counts up through the menu. When it gets to four, it resets it to one again, so the menu wraps round. Um, and then each time there's an option saying, if it's one, then print option one. If it's two, print option two. And if it's three, print option three. And obviously I can expand this as far as I want. But importantly, it also operates a display. So I've got an option one disp uh, function here, which are up at the top. And each one of those just at the moment sends the text to the screen to say option one, two, three as well. But obviously that could be any text or graphics put into those functions to display different things. But obviously that can't be echoed back to the serial port of its graphics, so it will just be the options. And those won't be things that say option one, two, three. Eventually there'll be things like open faceplate, Co's faceplate, fire unibeam, those sorts of things. So I can put what I want in there and structure my menu up. And of course, when I open the serial terminal, then we get what I just showed you. So every time I type in an A, it increments through and it also alters the display. And then I'll have another button which activates the option. So this doesn't look very exciting at the moment, but it will operate over Bluetooth on a smartphone. And also what I need to do next is build some actual physical hand controllers with buttons on, which will interface to the joysticks in the arms. So I can operate it and look at the display when I'm in the suit and operate it from a smartphone when I'm not in the suit. I've now implemented an input node, which is on this red breadboard down here. And this is gonna be one of the hand controllers so now if I press this button on here, we can see the options scrolling through and they still scroll through on the terminal, which will eventually be Bluetooth. So basically this is connected with this yellow wire. The transmit on the serial here is connected to the second UART in on the Arduino. So now this is connected to a different serial port to the terminal. And this is just sending the character A every time I press this button. And therefore it's scrolling through the menu options. As I press that button, it's still echoing back to the screen. So that would echo back to my Bluetooth device. And the same thing, of course, happens if I press A on the keyboard. So that gives me the display in both places and the option to operate things in both places. And eventually I'll have two hand controllers, of course, which will both do the same thing and they will go into different serial ins on the Arduino Mega. This is the code for the hand controller. So uh, basically I'm reading two digital pins. One is for the menu and one is to execute the option, which will be coming on to shortly. And the loop is basically reading those as digital ins. Um, and essentially if one is pressed, it sends an A. And if the other one is pressed, it sends a B. The rest of this code is for switch debounce. So if you do press the button, it waits 50 milliseconds and checks you're still pressing it. And it's also got this latching um, system. So uh, basically when you've pressed it, it sets the last button variable to zero, which means that you can't just keep holding that button and it's sending lots of A's. So you have to release it so button one is one and these are input pull up so they're ones when they're not pressed and zeros when they are. Again, there's a delay there um, and then it sets that toggle over to the other state. So you can't have, a, have a, an A transmitted until you've let go of the button for 100 milliseconds and pressed it again for 50. The other button does the same thing, but it sends the character B, which will be to execute the menu command. So if we now open a serial monitor and I reach over and press those buttons, every time I press one, I get an A, and every time I press the other one, I get a B. And if I press and hold it, nothing happens till I release it and press it again. On the master Arduino Mega, I'm in fact now initializing all four serial ports. So the one that's connected to the USB port will eventually be the Bluetooth. The next two will be the two hand controllers. So I'll have two of those controllers, one in each hand. And the third one, or the fourth one in fact, will be the one that transmits to all of the receiving nodes that control all of the things in the suit. So um, I've also implemented a little thing that says Jarvis ready when you first switch it on. And then in the main loop, essentially it checks each serial port in turn. And if there's any data on any of them, it runs the menu. And now I've taken that menu code and put it into a function which is up at the top called menu. 
which basically does what it did before. So it counts through the counters and displays the options on the screen and displays the display functions, which are down below, if any of those options are triggered. So the next thing will be to get some output nodes that activate the things around the suit and have the option to activate those menu options with the B button on the hand controllers or through Bluetooth or through the terminal when you select a menu option. I've just put in the activation options for the menu. So now when you first boot, it says Jarvis ready. If I scroll through as before, I get option one, two, three. And now if I select the B button, it now says activate whichever one. So if I scroll through to three, I get three. Or I can arbitrarily scroll all the way through, select one, and it tells me the same thing. It's also echoing that back to the Bluetooth, which is currently the serial. And again, if I type on the keyboard, the A's, I can scroll through and B will activate the function. So I can do that with a Bluetooth terminal. So now I'm gonna build some output nodes, which are also gonna be on the serial network on the last UART, and we'll get that to actually activate some things. I've now implemented two output nodes. So these are connected to the fourth UART. It's hard to see, this blue piece of breadboard is a sort of junction box for power and for data on that port. And they're all on the same UART and what happens is they listen for an identifier. So when I select the different options on the menu, which I can still scroll through of course, um, when I press the activate button, the trigger, it sends a different character over the serial bus. So one is listening for an A, one is listening for a B, and um, I've got option three actually sends an A and a B. So if I select option one and trigger that, should see this Arduino is operating the servo because it hears its character. If I scroll through to the next option, which is option two, we should get some LEDs on our NeoPixel ring. So this Arduino is listening for a B. And if I scroll through to option three, that sends an A and a B. So they both activate at once, which could be quite useful. So I could have multiple lighting, lighting controllers throughout the suit, which are all listening for a specific character and they all turn on at once. So even though they're distributed, they in fact have the same identity. And I could also have nodes that listen for the characters from others. So I could, for instance, have a sound node that listens for the A and the B and the C and the D. And when it hears them, it plays a different sound for each, uh, for each um, character that's transmitted. So when I activate, say, the faceplate or some servo feature, it plays a sound for that because it hears this is being activated. And when lighting comes on, it plays a different sound. So essentially all I'm doing is running power and data to each node. The transmitting nodes go in on one UART and the um, receiving ones come out on the other. And these will all be connected to one single serial cable, five volts and ground. And then they will all activate their features based on the menu options. And of course this still works on the terminal. The next thing to do is attach Bluetooth and then I can put my phone down here and show how that looks all in one go. In the master code, all I've done is the option to listen for the character B from the hand controllers. So basically we've still got the A to display the options on the screen, but if it gets a B, it echoes back to the serial terminal that's activating that function, and it runs another function for activating each option on the menu. And those are down here in the activate option section. So all that's doing is writing to the display that it's activating that function, and then it's um, serial printing to that last UART. It's UART three, but they run zero to four, so it's the fourth UART. That one's, when I select option one on the menu, sends an A, that one sends a B, that one sends an A and a B. And of course I can put any code in there I want to send to multiple nodes, one node, or to do whatever it wants to do. In the slave code, that's really, really simple. So that is just, this is the one for the servo, so that is just, uh, looking for serial, if there's some serial there, if it's an A in this case, it moves the servo. The ones for the LEDs just look for a B and then they uh, turn the lights on. It's really, really simple. And as I say, I can have some that look for multiple characters and then they do things in the instance that's, that any other node is triggered. So it's a really distributed system that can be really expandable. We're now gonna configure up this Bluetooth module which is an HCO5, and you'll notice the one with the little switch on, which we need to press to get it into AT mode. Some of them don't have the switch. The other thing I've got here, which is what it's linked to, is a USB to serial device. So I can plug this straight into a USB port, open a COM port, and we can type in commands. So I've got RX and TX connected to RX and TX the other way around here. So the RX is connected to the TX, and we've got the power connected so it gets five volts. 
And to put it into AT commands mode, we need to press and hold the switch. You can do it just by pressing it on power up, but if you hold it, it works much better because then it returns things like it's named to you when you query it instead of giving you nothing and looking like it's not working. So what you need to do is hold that little switch down, which is tiny. Not sure if I've got it there. Yeah, that's it. And then we need to power it up and down. So I'm just gonna unplug the USB cable and power it up again. And we should find that this little LED flash is much slower and that's how you know it's in AT mode. So um, we now need to go onto a serial terminal and open a terminal to it and we can type some commands in to configure it. I've just opened a serial terminal to the device and I'm using the Arduino serial monitor but you could use any other serial terminal. So um, I know this device is at 38400 board which is on this drop down down here and you need to select both NL and CR for this to work. So the best thing to do to check that you've got connectivity is just to type in AT in upper ca case characters and it should say OK and then we can begin to query it. So if I do AT, AT plus name should tell us our name is HCO5 and if I do AT plus UART it tells us that it's in 38400 mode which we already know. Um, I want to rename this so I'm going to do AT name and I'm going to call it Hulkbuster. And that should be fine. And there's not much else to do. There's other, some other commands like we can um, check its version and so on, but uh, not too much exciting stuff there. We can change the UART as well, but I've programmed everything else in the Arduinos to run at 38400. So that should be fine. So now it should just work as a transparent serial link. Uh, we need to get out of this and save the settings. So we just do um, AT reset. And that should be it, and we can reboot it, and now we should be able to pair to it with a phone and um, go and shove data down it. So the Bluetooth device is now linked up to the first UART, and this is the one that's actually attached to USB to the PC, but this is now just USB power. So if I go, I've already paired to it on my phone, and it's called Hulkbuster, but if I go to a Bluetooth terminal app, which is just a free app, it's very much like the Arduino terminal, but Bluetooth and runs on a phone. And I go here and I select connect to a device, insecure or secure, doesn't really matter. There's Hulkbuster, so let's connect to that. And we should see all the same stuff that we get on the, um, uh, basically the terminal on the screen. So if I go like this and type in A, the moment we can see the little display here is saying Jarvis ready. As soon as I hit A on there, it should say option one. And it should also return the text option one onto the phone screen here. I don't know how clearly you can see that. As I keep entering A's as I did on my PC, both of them come through option two and three and so on. And this will be my whole menu. And these things will, of course, say, you know, open helmet, close helmet, blah, blah, blah. So if we go to option one and press B, this says activate one. The survey works and it says activate one on my display in the helmet. And again, I can scroll through to two do exactly the same thing, so that should turn the LEDs on. Don't know if I saw that. Did it work? Yes. And again, we can scroll to option three, which does both. There we go, and they both operate. So this is uh, basically the remote screen on my phone for the screen in the helmet for this distributable system. So I think this is gonna work out really well. And of course, the buttons still work when I press these buttons. So they actually give me that text on my phone screen still as I scroll through when I activate them, exactly the same. So I could have other data coming out of the suit if I had any that would come back onto my phone screen. That's all I'm gonna do this time. Next time I'm gonna start building that system into the suit. So I'm gonna at least get the helmet working, these flaps and lights and things on the front. We'll get that Arduino Mega in, and even if I haven't got the hand controllers implemented, of course, I can control it over Bluetooth. Um, and that's the beauty of having a network that I can expand as I go and build out the suit. Once that's installed and we've got most of the stuff working, I'll then be going all the way over the suit from top to bottom, detailing it up, putting those fill-in sections, the lighting in, all of those things. And that should bring us to the end of the project within a few episodes. So don't forget to subscribe to check out the end of this project and also some other projects in my channel, including my life-size BB-8 projects and Project Ultron, which is a real robot. All right, that's all for now.